the biblical truth of our hymn today softly and tenderly by Will Lamartine Thompson. This is typically a lullaby, a gospel hymn tra tradition that puts Jesus as a motherly figure, gently rocking and comforting her child. Gratitude continues to, to the popularity of the of the religious song that presents Jesus as waiting, caring, forgiving, and his many compelling metaphors. Perhaps Re Revelation chapter three verse twenty captures the spirit of this hymn. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. This patient Jesus stands on the portal, waiting and watching for you and me. The second stanza is different approach. How can we reject pleading one who offers a pardon? The third stanza increases urgency. Time is now fleeting. Moments are passing. Shadows are gathering. Deathbeds are coming. Hurry up and believe on Jesus. The final stanza returns to the theme of Jesus who offers mercy and pardon for the sinner. And then the refrain of this gospel song, the invitation to come home four times in melody and two times in a coupling lower voices. And softly and tenderly has been the invitation hymn of revival tradition. The invitation to come home may be as seen as the invitation to join Jesus in heaven. Um, okay. Hymnologist Ernest Ermarin, E M U R I A N, told a story associated with this hymn. When the world renowned lay preacher Dwight L. Moody laid on his deathbed in Northfield, Massachusetts, Will Thompson made a special visit required to his condition. The intended physician refused to admit him to the sick room. Moody, having hearing him talking just outside the door of his bedroom, recognized Thompson's voice and he called him to come to his bedside. Taking the Ohio pro poet composer by the hand the dying evangelist said, Will, quote, Will, I would rather have written softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, than anything I have ever, anything I have been able to do in my whole life End of quote. So what we have here is a wonderful great hymn. Softly and tenderly. Jesus is not going to come a raven idiot. He's not going to come in flaming fire in the invitation. His first advent, he came as a baby in a manger. Now the second advent, he's coming in flames of fire and a sword and as a lion, the tribe of Judah, to the wrath of God and vengeance upon those that have rejected God. And you may have preachers who scream and holler and spit and hell fire. But softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. When you're in a preaching service, you're in a street meeting, somebody has come to your door, a co-worker is a gospel track with you, a loved one has opened a Bible to you, and However, the message is being brought to you, and your heart starts changing. 
Now, some people get angry and reject and continue to reject. Some people, they get sad in, in their condition. And that's the Holy Spirit working in our heart, convicting you. Hey, that Bible that you're listening to, not the preacher, the Bible, it's telling you who you are. And softly and tenderly that heart, it's you. You're the sinner. You're the one that Jesus came and suffered and died. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. I'm, I was saved April 25th, 1987. I am living proof of the salvation of God. As I go into the world and preach the gospel, Jesus is softly and, and tenderly coming to people that hear me preach, hear me talk, Hear me with an open bow and the Holy Spirit convicts their heart. Do you hear the preacher? Do you hear my words? You need me. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Oh, you ought not to yell and scream. Isaiah says one of the first ones of the chapters. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their iniquity. It ain't the message of the volume of the of the of the, the deliverance of who's given the message. It's how's it coming into your heart? And Jesus comes softly and tenderly. And there are people who walk away anger and bitter. And there are people who walk away saved. See, on the portals he is waiting and watching. Watching for you and me. When a man or woman comes to you with the gospel and a Bible, and they're dealing with you as a lost sinner and they want you to get saved. That moment, Jesus Christ is come. Listen. Believe. Will you come? And you may think that person is rude, crude, angry, and not to calling Jesus. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling and he's using that person who is working with you. And Jesus is wanting for you to be saved is why God has sent that person. And, uh, I mean, let me just speak for myself. I've gone to go buy fruits and vegetables. Why is that guy over there screaming and hollering? So everybody can hear and God may have sent you to a farmer's market to hear Jesus call you and say, hey, listen to that man preach. Don't get offensive. Listen to the word of God. Listen to hell. Listen to heaven. Listen, your religion can't save you. Your church attendance can't save you. You can't do nothing to save you. Listen to that man say, listen, Jesus saying, only I save. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? And the Bible says many will go to the broad way. Few will go through the straight gate. And there are people, and I've heard in my own ministry and all that, uh, tomorrow, when I get older. I mean, I'm going to say tomorrow, and, you know, when I get older, when I, there may not ever be a tomorrow. At any moment, the rapture may happen. And as far as the Gentiles, when the tribulation period comes, the moment that rapture comes and Christ calls his bride away, it's not for Gentiles no more. Unless they do and, and treat Israel correctly, but you're now under the law. You're under faith and the law. And your attitude, what you and how you treat the Jew. Right now is... I'll do it tomorrow. 
I'm using, I'll do it tomorrow as any excuse for later on, not now. Friend, you may not, right now, it's afternoon. You may not have a night. When I preach on the streets, it's usually Saturday morning, I will say, you may not have an afternoon. And you don't know. Your tomorrow may never come and you'll wake up into the, the hell of fire for all eternity. And why did you go into hell? Not only because you didn't believe on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ, but you thought you had tomorrow to believe. And there is no tomorrow. Pleading for you and me. Listen, the Holy Spirit, again, it's preaching. It's a Sunday school. It's a gospel track. It's somebody with an open Bible. Somebody is dealing with you, and as you're listening, the Holy Spirit is working on your heart, and some get angry. And they, why do they get angrier? Because Jesus is pleading. I'm angry. Pleading for you, I'm angrier. And when you got an angry attitude towards God, the more that the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart for you to do right and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the angry you're getting, the more angry you're getting is more depleting. The angriest you get is more depleting. That's why I don't get upset when people get angry when I witness to them. To me, that means the Holy Spirit is working on them. Else they wouldn't get angry. And then there's that person, you're dealing with them. And they're getting up, I don't mean upset, angry. I mean, they're getting upset with, with themselves. They're getting upset with their life. They feel unfulfilled. And they're getting even more burdened. And they're getting even more burdened. What is that that's pleading? Jesus is pleading. Pleading for you and me. And you're getting to the point. And then... And then, some will say tomorrow. Some will say, oh, no, don't need it. And then some will turn to Jesus and believe on him and be saved. Why should we linger? Heed not his mercy. Because I got something better than Jesus, and you don't. Because the Bible was written by man, and yes, it was inspiration by, by the Holy Spirit, unlike textbooks. I'm a good person. No, there's none that do as good. I've got my religion. Yeah, the religion will bring you into hell. And as that person is dealing with you and pleading, Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and me. Come, come now, let us, God says, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. It is the Holy Spirit is dealing with you while somebody's trying to witness to you from the Bible about your soul. And it's, I'm getting angry, I'm getting angry, I'm getting brokener, I'm getting brokener. That's God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, come. And I said, some people get angry and walk away. Some people get remorse. They get troubled and they still walk away. And some get sadder and sadder and they come to Jesus. Pleading for you and me. Why should we linger? Heed not his mercy. Mercy's for you and for me. Listen, when somebody's witnessing... They've gone through the same thing that you're going through. They have, they are a miserable, wrench, wicked, vile, and, and sinner standing before God. Somebody brought them the Bible, and they have believed. They have broken down. They have gone from whatever they trusted to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And they got the mercies of God. By faith and belief in Jesus. Time is now fleeting. And as I said, again, there is no tomorrow. We're getting quick. 
Everybody hates 2020, but we're in September already. And before you know it, your body's going to lay cold in a grave. And where will your soul be? Your soul will go to glory, will go to heaven through the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus. Everything and nothing else, your soul will be in hell. And when you die, whether you go to heaven or you go to hell, eternity begins. And that will never end. Time is now fleeing. Moments are passing. You realize now you just spent 16 minutes and 10 seconds already listening to me talk about softly and tenderly. You know how many people died right now in 16 minutes and 25 seconds? Do you know how many people died with a to-do list for today? You know how many people don't wake up in the morning and they, I was going to do this today, I'm going to run to the bank, I got to go pay this bill, I got to get the car oil changed, I got to meet Sally at the store, I, I'm, they're having a special coffee, boss wants me to work at 10 o'clock this morning. There are people who have plans for the day and their plans have stopped because they did not wake up. They woke up in eternity. Passing from you and me. Listen, it's just, you know, it's the same 24 hours, but that 24 hours can be cut short by you dying. And if you die, I'll do, I'll believe on Jesus tomorrow. Friend, you're lost in hell. Shadows are gathering. Death night is coming. Coming for you and me. We're all going to die. Listen, I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. I'm going to die. The wages of sin is death is written to Christian. As a Christian, if the Lord tarries, my salvation does not stop me from dying unless the rapture happens. Glory to God. But I am going to die just as much as the lost, wicked, unsaved, kind fellow who doesn't believe on Jesus. The Bible says for the Christian to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That means the body died and your soul goes off to glory. And even a Christian can say tomorrow, the sal not to salvation, I'll serve the Lord, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll, I'll, when I go to church, next time church, I'll go and get some tracts and I'll pass them out and you don't ever make it to church again. I'll read my Bible tomorrow. And then between now and tomorrow, you're now absent from the body and you have now been with Jesus Christ. I'll tell my family about Jesus tomorrow. And either you or they have now passed on to the eternal life. As quick as time is coming, so is death. Every day, we're one day closer to the rapture of the Lord Terry. We're one, one day closer to our death. And we don't know when. Oh, for a wonderful love, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We love him because he first loved us. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised 
promised for you and me to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's a promise. I won't get into anything else. If you're a lost man here in this here in this video or audio, the most majority thing you need to do right now, the promise of God is whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says when you believe on Jesus Christ with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The promise of God right now is if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can have eternal life. Though we have sinned, all have sinned. I've been saved since 1987, and I, I'm, I still sin in the flesh. I confess my sins, and I am I I confess my sins, and God is faithful enough to forgive me my sins and to cleanse me of my sins. Sinner, if you haven't been to Calvary, you haven't been to Jesus Christ. All your sins are still on your account. And there is nothing you can do outside the blood of Jesus Christ that will cleanse you of your sins. And when you die in your sins, you will go to hell. Though we have sinned, his mercy and pardon. Pardon is to be relieved. In order to get a pardon, a person must be guilty. No guilt, no pardon. You've got to come to Jesus Christ. I'm a sinner. I'm a wicked, vile sinner. I've sinned against you, God. And I need to be clean. Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. A pardon can only be received by a person that is guilty. If a governor of any of the states walks into a prison, and he's got a stack full of pardons. And he walks into the first prison. There's the man sitting there on his bunk. What do you want? I'm the governor of such and such state. Yeah, so what? I, I, I'll give you a pardon. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. Are you guilty of the crimes? No. I was framed. I don't need to be in here. Hey, where are you going? Door slams he, through the window. I can't give you a pardon if you're not guilty. Goes into the next cell. Man's over there brushing his teeth. And he, I'm the governor. Yeah, what do you want? I'm here to offer you a pardon. Oh, yeah? Are you guilty of the crimes? What was a racial thing? Cops are against me. Where are you going? I can only give a pardon to a guilty man. I'm sorry. Goes into the next cell. There's a man. He's just sitting there. And the governor walks in and goes, Hi, I'm the governor. Yes, sir. What, what can I do for you? I'm offering a pardon. Are you guilty? Governor, I, I, I'm guilty. I'm telling you, my crime has bothered me, and, and and I can't sleep at night. And and the guilt and my conscience, Governor, I, I, I'm just totally guilty, and I don't know how to be. I, I don't know how to relieve. I mean, I've been sentenced to jail, but I, that's not good enough. Warden. Yes. Give me one of them pieces of paper. You believe, sir, that I can set you free from music? If that's what your job is here, I, yes, you can. Here's your pardon. You may let this man out. It says, though he have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and me. When you come to Calvary's cross and you look at that, that man that died and suffered upon that cross, 
that was buried and arose again the third day according to Scripture. When you acknowledge that, that man on that cross is God, and that that blood that is shed is God's blood, and that it was done for you, now you may not know all the Ten Commandments, but you know you are a sinner, you are vile, and there is no hope what's forever. That man with the open Bible, the gospel, he's telling me, I'm done, I'm finished, I'm going to hell, I don't want to go to hell. April 27th, 1987, I received the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't want to go to hell. There was an open King James Bible. He told me I'm going to hell. Tell me I was a sinner. Uh, yeah, I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. Do you know that God can relieve you? God can pardon you? God can save you? Tell me how. My knees hit the floor. And I asked God. I don't remember where I asked God to save my soul. I don't want to go to hell, God. And I, I didn't name off all my sins. I didn't have a checklist. I said, God, I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. God says, son, yes, father, hand me the pardon. Here you go, father. Signs his name in blood. Hand me the adoption papers. I'll adopt him as my son. Holy Spirit, yes, Father, get down there and go dwell with that man. He's ours. No problem. See, I came to God as a sinner. I didn't say I was good. I knew I wasn't good. Wonderful love he promised and promised for you and me. Though we have sinned, his mercy and pardon, pardon for you and me, and that pardon comes through, you don't eat Jesus. You can't say Jesus is not God. You can't say Muhammad. You can't come there, we're going to populate outer space. you got to come to God that's died on that cross and say, God, I know you're suffering and dying, but... God, I'm a sinner. And I heard you're the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Will you take my sin and get me out of hell? And that suffering Savior, that, suffer, that suffering Lamb of God, suffering God in that cross looked down at me. He says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And Paul says, I, since the day I got saved, I am not in heaven. I'm already seated in heavenly places. Come home. Come home. Ye that are weary, come home. Earnestly. Tenderly. Jesus is earnest for you to come and he's calling. As long as you're dead in your sins and alive, he's going to call for you. Once you die without him, the calling's done. And you get the wrath of God. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. And when you get that pardon of God, you go to glory. You go before the Father. When you reject that pardon, you go to hell. There are two eternal homes. One is heaven through Jesus Christ alone. And the other is hell. Anything but anything and everything included nothing. Except Jesus Christ.